السلام لك يا مريم أمة عمانوئيل السلام لك يا مريم خلاص أبنا آدم السلام لك يا مريم Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Dardasham. Um, I'm blessed to be Dardashing with Abuna Michael and Abuna David. It's nice to have you fathers, nice to be with you. Nice to be with you. Thank you Abuna. Nice. It's um, a to be here. Thank you Abuna. Uh, we might just start with a quick prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Thank you dear Heavenly Father for every blessing that you've given us. We thank you Lord on every occasion, in every condition for all things. We thank you, Lord, for the things that we have and the things that we don't. Thank you, Lord, for being our Father, and thank you, Lord, for the Church, and thank you for your Word. We pray, Lord, that you be with us and that you support us, Lord, during these difficult times. We pray, Lord, a special prayer for all of your people, Lord, all of your Church, those who are watching at home, that you make their houses, Lord, houses of prayer and houses of purity and houses of blessing. We pray, Lord, that this period may be a period of edification and holiness and prayer and retreat for us, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you forgive us, Lord, for our sins. Give us hearts of repentance, hearts that are pleasing to you, Lord. Hear all of our prayers through the intercessions of St. Mary and St. Mark and all your angels and saints. Lord, hear us as we pray, thankfully saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. How are you, Buna? Good, Buna. Yeah, no, it's uh, been, a, been a hectic day, but, but <laughs> we're very blessed, thank God. Yeah, thank God. Myself, Buna. Fine, I'm doing fine, thank you. That's good. I know in Dardasha we often talk fathers about things that are a bit lighthearted, but um, I wanted to talk today about um, a great hero of our church who recently went to heaven, um, who is um, Amir Hanna. Um, by the time this episode screens, I think we'll be close to the time of his funeral. Um, he was he was a marvelous man. Amir Hanna is actually <coughs> a saint. I can say that wholeheartedly. From his youth, he um, loved God and he served God with all his ability. He used to wake up between 4.30 and 5 o'clock every morning, um, praying for everyone, preparing things for the youth, Sunday school, all his life. And uh, one of the stories is he has a friend of him in Egypt. And he was telling him, what's these people that go and become monks? Why would they leave the city life and, you know, with all the entertainment, with all everything else, and go and live in a desert? And he couldn't understand. So Amir Hanna said to him, why don't you go and ask them? <laughs> as simple as that. Go and ask them. So he went and, uh, <laughs> to one of the deers and Elam Baghassan, he was a monk at the time. He passed away a few years back. And um, he, so they were sitting on a lake. And then the chap asked Abu Nagasan, Elam Baghassan, he said to him, why on earth would you leave the city, be dressed in raggy stuff and look the way you look? What for? Amba Ghassan had a stick in his hand. So he tapped it into the water and a snake came out of it in the end of it. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like, so like he, the Old Testament. Or not. Yes. <laughs> so he got, he got, that chap got scared. Actually, this chap comes to our church, but I don't want to mention names. So he looked at him. He was frightened. <laughs> he says to him, that's why we are here, in order to trample on the serpents and scorpions. Wow. And uh, that was a great lesson. After that, he used to go to 
the monastery often enough. And then he came to Australia. Anyway, he said to him, um, Abuna, I want to become a deacon. He says to him, the second day you stop smoking, you become a deacon. So time passes, he comes to Australia. He doesn't, um, he doesn't remember any of these things. Then Lamba Schnuda was coming to Sydney. And while he was here, he said, oh, okay, I'm going to stop smoking today and I'm going to go and ask to be a deacon. And Lamba Schnuda decided, no, I'm going to go tomorrow to Canberra do a mass there, and I'll ordain deacons there. So he went, and he, or, he got ordained. And he remembered, he said to him, the second day you stopped smoking, not the first day, the second day you stopped smoking, you become a deacon. So the, 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 the prophecy took place. So Amir Hanna was the cause of this person to come to God. And that person obviously... Uh, you know, brought a lot of people to, to Christ through him. And that's an example, an example of how holy he was. Um, he spent all his life, all his ri uh, life, for the service of the Lord. And uh, really, we, um, he, he's been very lucky the way he went uh, to heaven. He didn't have to suffer. The Lord actually honored him yes. by, not, by not giving him a disease or suffering for a long time because he honored God in life. He honored God in life and he honored him in his death. And now he's happy. At least he is not uh, in uh, a restriction like we are <laughs> yeah, now. <that's> right. <laughs> Full yeah. freedom. Yeah. That's my feeling as well, Abuna, because I think that, you know, this man, he is a pioneer of the church in Australia and served so faithfully and taught many generations theology and spirituality and if there was an opportunity to have a haza or to have a funeral i think thousands would have wanted to come and mm. receive his blessings really i i believe that i know i know that mm. but i think as you said that god decides to honor him mm. and with much higher honor Absolutely. you know in heaven i i have a number of really fond memories Absolutely. really fond memories with him Absolutely. one is that um when I was at university, he was teaching at the Theological College Doctrinal Theology. And he was so matter of fact that he has a number of sentences which I can never forget for the last 15 years. When we were talking about um, the debate, for example, about the works versus, you know, the um, faith versus faith. And then he read the epistle of St. James that said, faith without works is dead. And he looked up at the class and said, for those who say that faith alone, what shall I do with the book of James? Shall I put it in the bin? <laughs> <laughs> Very matter of fact. And the whole class started laughing and I never forgot it. Mm -hmm. And um, he, I, I fondly remember as well, we had an exam at the end of that subject. And he said, it's an open book exam. And he had given us these wonderful notes that he had written personally, about this thick, full of notes about doctrine. And I wasn't sure if we were allowed to bring those notes because they're gold. So I put up my hand and asked him, Uncle Amir, can I bring the, your notes? Or when you mean, say, open book, um, is it just bring my Bible, bring any other books? Can I bring, because I feel like this has the answers to everything. <laughs> he looked at me, Keda, he just his face was expressionless and he said to me bring that book and if you want you can bring your mum and your dad <laughs> and, which we, I, I just never forgot that he's just his sense of humor was just so beautiful and um, he gave me the message and he, as long as you know the content you know the content mm. another really fond memory that i have is good friday i don't know if you've ever observed on good friday do you, after you know, the, when the lights turn back on on Good Friday, when the Lord Khalas you know, has, mm. you know, has died on the cross, I always I, I observed when I was young, Uncle Amir would you know, be the first deacon to take his badrashin from the black to the red. And then all of the black cloths around the church, he'd pull them down. And sometimes 
it would be the most inconvenient one, very high. Mm. He doesn't care. <laughs> Alas, <laughs> the salvation is complete. And you know, it, I, like when I remember observing it when I was young, and then just thinking, why is he doing that? And then maybe, like I asked him and explained it, and then I enjoyed every Good Friday observing that moment you know it, it's part of the rites of the church of good friday now that the lights go on and uncle amir is the one that's taking off all of the black and he's just uh yeah. he... i'll tell you something about this good friday <clears throat> the first one we had here which was completely in english yeah he was there and after that he came and told me you know i've been to so many good fridays it's the first time i understood it fully mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. How remarkable. He says, I've been so many, and he, he yeah. was, he had. Yeah. Yeah. And then he says, this was the, the, the one that I understood yeah. fully. I loved, I loved, um, I've, I've had plenty, as, as you want to like, a lot of fond memories with Uncle Amir, especially as growing up as well. But, um, but as a priest, actually, what, one of the, the nicest things that I, that I loved about him was after every Mass, without fail, you know, I would go to him and say, you know, you know, live and pray. And he'd say, and then a shogl namelo. Yes. Like any time yeah. he would see he would often say anyone, that. anyone kind of just, you know, like chatting around afterwards, <laughs> a deacon say, he'll go to them and say, Yalla, and then a shogl namelo. Like it just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, a very simple sentence, but it gives such mm. deep insight into his mm. seriousness in mm. spirituality. Mm. His very, his clarity on, you know, all that he's working hard for, his purpose in life, and spreading that to other people, reminding us constantly that we have work to do. You know, our job here is not just to be complacent and do nothing. Mm. Our purpose is to spread that good news, spread that theology, spread the, the treasure that we have in the Orthodox Church mm. to everyone around us. And I, I really loved Kedah, just hearing him say those words. I almost like was waiting for it every time at the end mm. of the Mass. Mm. And, and then he was consistently. Mm. It's beautiful. I think there's a link going around, Fathers, um, allowing people to share their stories and their experiences, um, which is so precious because I'm sure that, you know, there's just so much so much more that we're not aware of, of what he did and, and he left a legacy and, you know, he's a great man and we pray that any God that reposes his soul and gives comfort to all of his family, to Tad and to Mariam and Nick. And, um, yeah, but it always makes me reflect upon that, like about our turn, you know. One of the things I love about St. Mark's and, uh, is that um, in every stage of life, we have role models. Mm. I remember being, you know, in high school, and looking up at the you know the guys that were a little bit older, I think, oh, I want to be like them. And then when they were married and I was unmarried, I look at them and go, oh, look, that he looks like he's a very caring, kind husband. I want to be like that. And so on. And it continues in every stage of life, mm. even death. Mm -hmm. Right? There's some people when they die, like, that's how you die. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> I, I, look, and we, we yeah. just, it's just so nice to constantly be reminded of that. Yes. I remember what, one of, one of the Hazas, um, uh, I can't remember his first name, um, but Kira Demian's grandfather. Oh, Dr. Um... Gamel, maybe? I forgot his yeah. first name. I, I'm sorry, I forgot his first name. But at the Hazza, everybody was handing out these tiny little yeah. boxes of Tic Tacs, yeah. four or five Tic Tacs. And I asked them, what's this about? And they said, because Geddo, he's always wanting to give, always wanting to give. And he would give anything to anyone. And if he can't offer them anything, he would just have a Tic Tac. <laughs> and I said, what, what a legacy. And yeah. I actually took it home and I still have it on, you know, on, on like one of my shelves at home as a nice reminder that like, this is the kind of legacy that you leave, that this man was you know, like Uncle Amir, a pioneer in the church and serving. And you know, um, like Kira's grandfather, he was you know, a, a man that's always giving what are people going to say about me when I'm gone? Um, are they going to talk about my money, about my degrees, about my, you know, nothing. It's worthless. Mm. Yeah, what kind sure. of... Sure. I have a question, Father. <clears throat> We're approaching the fast of St. Mary, the Virgin Mary. Um, and a lot of youth, they say, look, I get embarrassed when I, you know, my friends go and have all these beautiful steaks and lahma mashwi and all of these things. And here I am just asking for salads. And, uh, and some of them, they ask me, and I don't know what to say, and I get embarrassed. Um, 
and it happens at work as well. You know, they go for lunch and then all of a sudden you say, no, no, I don't want to go. Oh, you know, my tummy's not feeling very well or, you know, one of, one of these excuses. So what do you think? What do you think they should do? Because they, that's often uh, a question that they ask, the youth ask, um, uh, you know, during fasting time. So what do you think, Abuna? Uh, I think, I think Abuna, like, uh, and I'm sure the fathers will, will, will add, Danny, but I think it's a wonderful conversation starter. Like it's actually an opportunity as opposed to a negative thing. Um, I mean, it's, it's really lovely to be able to tell people about God or about the church or about my faith and my beliefs. And, uh, and sometimes it can be awkward, like to start that conversation, perhaps. So if, if, that, if someone's already asking about, like they're, they're noticing me enough to know my dietary kind of changes and habits where last week I was devouring, a, you know, <laughs> uh, like a steak and, and, and you know, medium well or rare or whatever it is and all these sauces and things around it. And then all of a sudden today I'm asking for, you know, carrots <laughs> and salad. Um, and, and if someone notices and they're that close to me, then it, it's, it's a lovely opportunity for me to start, you know, t- talking to them about, about Christ and about my faith and about my beliefs. Um, but sometimes they say... I don't want to show off, tell him that I fast, you know, like, I don't want to become and say, you look, know, the Bible says, you know, if you're going to fast, still wash your face and, mm-hmm. you know, put uh, oil in your hair and, you know. Yeah. Well, I think, I think when it's also the way that you say, it, you know, it's not like, <laughs> you know, I am up here and you're, you know, to alaikum, you don't know what you're doing or whatever. No, like, it's not, it's not that at all. It's more, I think, as, 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 as the fathers always teach us, Yanni, we're all sharing in, in learning and in growing. And, you know, this is what I'm doing because of my weaknesses that I need to kind of work on, perhaps. What do you think, Abuna? No, I think, you know, the, there's a time, Abuna, for things to be done in secret, but then a time out of necessity for them to be done in open and depends on my intention and the Lord says you know let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven so I think if people know in my workplace or in my school whatever that I'm a Christian then it's good for them also to see some things that are good the self-control of fasting being one and many other things as well Uh, and I'm not doing it for the intention of my own glorification or anything like that but it's so that my Father in heaven is glorified and I become like light and salt. I think it's a bit similar to even raising children, you know, that when you're raising children, it's good to pray in front of them. It's good to read the Bible in front of them. It's good to give and allow them to see that our family is giving. And you know, not that I want praise from them, but that your light so shine before me that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So as, as the Buddha David was saying, you know, that like the Lord, he sees our hearts and he sees our intention. And, and I think it would be a shame, Abuna, like if there was a story once um, um, where they were saying that someone had, um, you know, gone, you know, passed over and, um, and, and then someone who was, was in Hades was telling them in paradise, why didn't you, it's a fictional story, of course, but they're saying like, we were with you, we were friends, we went to work together, we did this together, we did that. why didn't you say anything to me? Why didn't you, I didn't even know you were a Christian. So, so I think it would be a big shame, like the, the converse or the opposite would, of us saying nothing and keeping this treasure for ourselves. In a way, I almost think that's, I think it's a bit selfish. I mean, imagine if, if you've got unlimited, you know, multimillionaire with unlimited supply of money, would you not think to share that with other people? If it's, you know, it's certainly not going to affect you in any way. Of course, the answer is we, we would, you know, we, we, out of love. So, um, so I think it's, it's a duty and necessity to, but I think time and place, as Abun is saying, to try to make sure, and and I guess on the note of um, of parenting as well, um, it, yeah, how do our parents know what fasting is if we don't show them what that is? How will they know what a matanya is or what the agbeya is if we if we never open it? Um, I was reading a book um, by uh, Moro, um, what's his name? Um, Graham. So Moro Graham is Billy Graham's mother, and so Billy Graham, as you know, is like a profound kind of speaker and. And, you know, like his words and his preaching reached million, millions of people in Christianity. And Moro was like, so she wrote a book towards the end of her life. And she was saying that, talking about life growing up in the Graham household. And they were saying that the, the habits that they have and the habits that they did and what his father was doing and, and his mother, um, things like remarkable things, very small, but very remarkable in the sense that they would have, for example, a, a, a daily devotional at the breakfast table. 
um, where every day in the morning, dad would would be reading to his children or talking, discussing the Bible. Um, at night time, they'll always have daily prayer together at night as a family. They they had principles, obviously this was like 50, 60 years ago or more, but it was more, um, or more actually, but anyway, um, they would like eat together as a family and always discuss Christ. So I think I think all these little habits and little snippets, I think, are a wonderful way to teach children and in the same way as we're saying we can teach other people around us. And what better time than lockdown to perhaps, you know, if I'm not doing any of those things with my family, that that this is a chance to yeah, reset. The time. To yeah. reach like if I haven't been doing that before or I'd like to do that more, then this is a perfect opportunity to start those habits. Um, I was reading a book about about the power of habits. And it was saying that, you know, we all have good goals. You know, you speak to anyone in the room, we all love God, we all want to be successful, we all want to be spiritual. Everyone has good goals. But why is it that some people don't achieve those goals and others do? And and the biggest reason that they say is, is based on our habits. So one of the phrases that stuck with me is we don't rise to our goals, we fall to our habits or to our systems and the things that we do on a daily basis. So... Perhaps lockdown is a, is a wonderful opportunity for us to start creating those habits to, to, to achieve those goals. Okay, there's a question about this as well. <laughs> While we're at it. <clears throat> a lot of youth say life is so repetitive, so monotonous. I get the Agbeya, read the same Psalms every day, come to church, hear the same liturgy all the time, same one, and it becomes monotonous. What do we, how do you solve this problem or how to explain to them that's not the case? I think I'm, if you allow me, I will flip to Arabic. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so look, I, I think in, in, we have to remember that the, the, word, the Bible is the word of God. And the liturgy is called the divine liturgy. So it's not an academic exercise. My flipping to Arabic is not going yeah, very well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not an academic exercise. The, the words are alive. In a very, very clear way. لازم يعني يخش الصلاة يخش القداس بطلب من ربنا بحاجة في قلبه حاجة يعني الآن بانتونيوس طبعا is the classic example he goes in يعني أنا بفكر أنا 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 عايز أروح أسيب كل حاجة وبعدين the gospel says if you want to be perfect go and sell all that you have and come and follow me ومعظم الناس بتفكر ان الخلاص هو سمع كده وراح على طول بس ده ده ما حصلش لا طبعا ده ما حصلش في there's a beautiful book the life of anthony written by his friend saint athanasius وبتقول يعني القديس اثناسيوس بيحكي على الانب انطونيوس بيقول in a very clear way سمع كده وبعدين قلق على اخته هي صغيره واهاليه like his parents متوافقين فهو خايف عليها وراح القداس مره تاني وسمع ايه؟ دو نوت وري خلاص بقى <تصفيق> ومشي فواحد رايح من الكنيسه حاجه في قلبه حاجه بيطلب من ربنا عايز ارشاد فسمع الكلمه وخبطته بس انا بقى رايح بفتح الاجبيه ومخي في مكان تاني بخش الكنيسه وبفكر في هعمل ايه بكره ولا بعد الظهر يعني حتى لو الكلام هيخبط فيا مش هيخبط خالص وشباب كتير جدا بيجوا يحكوا لنا كده حاجات مبسوطين قوي ان ربنا موجود وربنا بيكلمنا ويورينا مثلا بيصلي المزمور وجي الجمله كذا اللي وقعته من طوله يعني ربنا ده يعني هيز انسرينج مي دايركتلي فيعني اي ثينك يعني اتس نوت جاست اي نو ات يعني يعني اي نو ات اي تو يعني وان ستوري لذيذه قوي كان في شاب يعني بيبعت لي مسج وقال لي انا My wife is going to to يعني give birth now. Pray for us. كان الساعة يمكن ساعة اثنين الظهر. فبعت له كده بعد أربع ساعات إيه الأخبار؟ بيقول لي لسه ما فيش حاجة. بعت له بالليل أو قبل ما أنام إيه الأخبار؟ يعني بنصلي لك؟ قال لي لا ولا حاجة. فقلت نمت بقى قلت بقى هصحى الصبح ألاقي بقى رسالة على الساعة 3 الصبح ولا حاجة هو 
وصحيت الصبح ما لقيتش حاجه على التليفون فبعت له بقول له آه ايه الاخبار في ايه؟ فيه. قال انا خلاص دلوقتي قرب 24 ساعه و... يعني فقال لي لا يعني في دلوقتي مشاكل ومش عارف قلت له طب بص صلي المزامير آم يعني وقلت له انت امسك المزامير وانت تصليها بصوت عالي عشان مراتك وهي شيز ان ان لايبه هي تسمع يعني تسمع وراح قال يعني راح بعت لي بعد دقيق دقيقتين قال لي ربنا موجود قلت له في ايه حصل قال فتحت الاجبيه وقريت مزمور 70 which says make haste oh god to deliver me وقال لي يعني انا ولا في 1000 سنه فكرت في انا قريت المزمور ده كام مره في حياتي <تصفيق> بس بقول احنا بقى لنا 24 ساعه وده <تصفيق> اول مزمور وبعدين يعني سموا الطفل ديفيد غيروا رايهم اتس جود نيم اتس جود نيم بس يعني بس حاجه 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 جميله يعني ده يعني ده اتس ا بيوتيفول اكسبيرينس مش مهم حتى قريت المزمور 1000 مره خبط فيا كده وانا في وقت احتياجي يعني لا اتس نوت اتس نوت جاست ريبيتيف اي اجري والحاجه الثانيه ابونا الاباء يعني بيقولوها ان يعني مش بس يعني اقرا وخلاص زي ما ابونا بيقول يعني تعرفين يعني انا سمعت في العربي بيقولوا في جمله كده حافظ مش فاهم يا يعني يعني اتس نوت اتس نوت جاست اتس نوت جاست يعني احفظ وخلاص واقول وتيك ا بوك بس 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 ذا ايديا از ان انا يعني يعني زي ما ابونا بيقول ده ده يعني اتس 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 لايف اتس الايف كلمه ربنا ده كلمه الله حيه يعني اتس اتس الايف فانا ممكن ليه ما اخليش الكلام بتاع داوود النبي ده يبقى الصلاه بتاعي انا يعني مش بس اقرا وخلاص بس بالزبط. اخلي دي يعني تبقى فعلا وفي كل الفيلينجز الايموشنز ذات وي فيل ان اول اوف هيومانيتي يعني موجوده في المزامير موجوده في الانجيل ف اي ثينك ان يعني مثلا قبل ما اقرا صلاه الشكر استنى شويه كده واعرف ان انا انا بكلم مين بكلم ربنا فاشكره على حاجات في حياتي انا وبعدين اقرا صلاه الشكر او ما اجي لمزمور 51 مثلا بقول ارحمني يا الله قبل ما اقول ده ده ده, ده صعب افكر في نفسي يعني ايه الحاجات اللي انا فعلا انا محتاج اي نيد ميرسي انا يعني عندي حاجات كتيره محتاجه تتحسن وبعدين اصلي صام 51 والحاجه الجميله ان المزامير والصلوات الموجوده في الانجيل دول معمولين من مثلا داوود النبي ده احنا عارفين هو ناجح في حياته الروحيه اتس لايك فور اكزامبل ما احنا بنسبون وي ستاديينج بنحب نبقى او ما احنا بن لايك ستاديينج فور اكزام يبقى عندنا اكزامبلري انسرز يعني الموديل انسرز مش عاوز اروح اقلد واحد سقط يعني خبتي فاروح يعني اقلد واحد ناجح وناجح كتير قوي واحد قلبه زي ربنا يعني ربنا نفسه اللي قال الكلام ده فانا انا اشوف وات ذا موديل انسر از وات ذا موديل بير از دي بتشكل الصلاه بتاعتي عشان اقدر اتحسن وانا في حياتي مع ربنا ان ان ماي لايف شيب سو وات دو يو ثينك ابونا هو كلامكم طبعا 100% مظبوط الواحد لما يروح اي حته لازم يحضر نفسه قبليها يعني مثلا جاي الكنيسه لو دخلت كده وخلاص طبعا مش هتمتع بيها انما قبل ما ادخل يا رب يسوع المسيح ليه الصلاه السهميه يا رب يسوع المسيح انا جاي لك دلوقتي عايزه ايه احس بيك عايز اكون يعني اشعر بوجودك معايا في القداس قبل ما اصلي يا رب يسوع المسيح انا عايز اصلي يعني عايز اكلمك خليني اشعر ان انت موجود قدامي الصلاه السهميه دي جميله جدا الواحد بيتمتع يا رب يسوع المسيح انا اقعد عايز اقعد مع الانجيلك فهمني انت بتقول ايه يعني انت اي الكلام بس كتير انا مش فاهمه زي مثلا الكلمه اللي اتقالت وفهمها على طول ان جت مظبوطه ساعتها عرف بالظبط ان دي كلمه له هو في رب يسوع المسيح خليني عرفني ايه الكلام اللي انت عايز تقوله لي شخصيا فتبقى الصلاه السهميه دي قويه جدا جدا وابتدت الكنيسه عندنا دلوقتي ريفايفت يعني ماتت مده طويله انما ابتدت دلوقتي تتنعنش تاني وابتدت معظم الاباء ومعظم الرهباني بيستخدموها تاني ومعظم الناس بيستخدموها تاني لانها قويه جدا اسم يسوع المسيح قوه قوه وعشان كده ابونا انتوني في الدير يديد ذا هول دوكترين على على ذات براير يا جيسس براير يا 
Thank you very much, fathers, for for being with us today, and it's a pleasure to be with you and to chat to Thank you. you. And Thank you. I always feel like, and Thanks even so. when the camera switches off, we keep chatting yeah. Yeah. all day. <laughs> Listen, I've seen that. <laughs> Thanks so much. That's a blessing. And uh, to everybody at home, thank you for being with us, and um, we miss you a lot, and we can't wait for the church to be full again with all of your smiling faces and. Please know that we're praying for you. And if you have a request for the altar, send it to one of the fathers. We believe in the power of the altar. And please keep us in your prayers as well. Bye, everybody.